In the previous films you learned how to get your files into Melodyne Editor and how to navigate inside the program. Now let's start and edit some of your files. After right clicking you can switch between different tools. You can change the tuning or the formants. the volume or the timing of each node. When you select and move several nodes at the same time, you decide whether you hear only the note you have touched with the mouse or you can listen to the result of your changes in the context of the whole chord. To toggle between signal monitoring and context monitoring, simply add the command key while you move nodes. Let's listen back to the changes in the context of the whole song. So the editing tools work uh, in the same fashion as you know them from former Melodyne editions now in the polyphonic world as well. The same goes for the uh, quantization panels we have, correct pitch and quantize time. We streamlined their functionality also, so check them out yourself. I will continue with some other thing I want to show you now, which is also part of the um, context menu. A lot of our plugin users asked for copy and paste, and here it is. Let's work on these few bars of an electric guitar. Say you don't like the sound of this note here? Let's look for a better sounding note, regardless of its pitch or timing, like this one here. Copy this note, then select the faulty one and hit paste. This way you copy the better note to the exact timing position of the wrong note. Just change the pitch and you're done. If the note still doesn't sound right, tweak the formants a little bit. That's better. You can also use copy and paste for quick building of new patterns. Say, you don't like the playing in this bar, where the musician left out a note. Just copy another one you like and paste it at the position where you think you should have played it. Again, change the pitch. All these changes don't affect the surrounding notes at all. Well, the new note is a bit on the short side. Let's select the time tool and make it longer. I'm pretty sure you want to try this out with your own sounds now. Go ahead, I'll feed everything into Melodyne Editor. As long as it's of clear tonal character, it will give you good results. If you choose drums, for example, this wouldn't be such a good idea. The results would be rather unexpected. But of course, you can try this out, and uh, you could also switch back to the normal percussive algorithm if you use it on drums, for example. Uh, before you get going with your own sounds, there are a few more things I want to show you. Uh, concerning how DNA actually works under the hood. So I move over to the piano now and explain a little bit about what's going on in the DNA algorithm. So that's what Melodyne basically does. It is looking for notes in a polyphonic recording, like when I play several notes at the same time. It will find all the notes that build up this chord and it will display the notes so I can touch them and move them around, each note separated from the other notes. Well, finding the notes is the one thing, the even um, tougher challenge would be to distinguish between the notes that have actually been played on the instruments and the overtones that are coming from the body of the instruments. So um, when I play, let's say, two octave notes, if you don't see what I play, it's hard to decide. Did I play two notes or was it just one note and the octave I'm hearing is 
part of the sound character. It's just an overtone and not an actually played note. Let me do this again. Two notes. One note. It's not a big difference. So in such case, Melodyne would offer me a kind of best guess. But it can be wrong, like we would probably be wrong if we had to decide this. So uh, Melodyne will show two notes where there should have been only one or the other way around. Let's get back to the program now and I'll explain how to easily deal with such a situation. So this is the piano I've just played. Melodyne is showing only one note where there should have been two. To correct this little mistake you call up the note assignment tool. Now a hollow blob shows up here which indicates that Melodyne classified this as an overtone and not as a note that was actually played. Simply double click the hollow blob to make it become a full note. When you do this the lower blob gets smaller. This way you can see from where the upper blob is getting his energy now. Let me turn it back into a hollow one. Watch how the lower blob changes while I switch the upper one from full to hollow and back again. Also there is a note separation here. You know note separations from your existing Melodyne already. In this polyphonic example the separation was probably triggered from the noise of the piano when I released the keys. Simply double click on the separation line when you don't want to have it here. Leave note assignment now by selecting any other tool. The displayed notes now fit to what you hear. All edits you do in note assignment mode don't affect your sound immediately. You're only dealing with the optical representation of notes here. But this is an important thing to do, and to do it carefully enough, for two reasons. First thing, if you see wrong notes it would be rather confusing to keep an overlook on what's on the track. And the second thing is even more important, um, if you would touch and move a note that is based on a wrong detection, this would not give you the best possible audio quality. So, in your daily workflow this will become an important step after every recording or every transfer. Check the notes carefully, maybe you have to enter note assignment and do some uh, edits there and then you continue your work. This is true for most audio files, regardless of how many notes are in the file, uh, as you can see in the next example. Let's call up the note assignment tool again. When we listen to this piano now, we focus on whether the notes we are hearing do fit to the notes that are displayed. What about this strong blob here? Does it really need to be there? As you can hear, the piano notes are moving up from low to high. But to make sure, let's click on the notes to let Melodyne play them back with a synthesized sound. Well, the melody goes here, right? So let's turn this blob to a full note. The note before that is definitely wrong. I mean, the melody isn't going like this. Okay, let's get rid of this one. To speed up this process, Melodyne offers you specialized tools like this double slider here. You can make more hollow or less hollow notes appear and you can raise the threshold for making them turn into full notes automatically. A setting like this looks good, since this high note here is likely to be in the sound. A few minor corrections still need to be taken though. You will soon get experience with DNA and then you will see that such soft notes on pitches that are slightly apart from the rest are most likely overtones that need to be removed in order to get a good representation of notes. The same goes for some minor edits to the note separations. Well, now it looks pretty good. What I see does now match with what I hear. Now you know the most important things about how to use the Melodyne Editor beta version. As mentioned before, we have set up a forum on our website and uh, we're looking forward to receive your feedback there. You can exchange your findings with us and you can also see what other fellow Melodyne users have found out and which questions uh, they have and so on. So everyone in our team is looking forward to talk to you there. Thanks. Thank mm -hmm. you.